While Spyro the Dragon and the PlayStation 1 and 2 were my first real steps into the world of interactive entertainment, I had no idea of the curveball that was about to hit me square in the face. To be more specific, this thing. Yeah, that thing. You see, while I was busy with the Purple Dragon and an elf boy and his pet ferret, best friend ferret, Otzel, I was about to discover an entirely different game that I'd never heard of before. From an entirely different genre that had never even occurred to me to even be the RTS or real-time strategy. On one of the last days of school in the spring of 2003, pretty sure it was 2003, I was busy with my friends in our own little corner of the class playing our Yu-Gi-Oh's and I was trading Relinquished for something. It wasn't worth it. When all of a sudden we see a crowd gathering around one of those Wonderful blue boxes. Like the noisy little children that we were, we too were drawn to this... whatever was going on. It was a little game called Myth. This one. Because apparently there's several of them. The next day, it was my turn. And I played it for about two hours. And let me tell you, to say I was enthralled would be... I can't think of any other word for understatement. It was an understatement. I was completely taken away by this fucking game. Base building, resource management, army management, commanding said armies into battle. Oh, there's nothing like it. Unless you don't like RTS games. And then there's a million other things you'd probably rather be doing. But I loved it. Anyway, I had to have this game. So, the first chance I had, I went with my mommy to the Wally World and zipped on over to the PC games. All right, let me explain something real quick. Like I said before, Santa Claus, spoiler alert, my parents weren't very tech savvy and neither was I. But luckily, I had some relatives that were, specifically an uncle. So we had a PC that wasn't a potato. It was a baked potato with cheese and bacon on top. But we did live so far out that we did not have internet. And I explain that because I had no idea that like computers had to have specifications for the games in order for them to run properly. I had no fucking idea. So everything that I'm about to tell you, I completely lucked out. I had no idea what I was looking at. I had no idea what to look for to see if things were compatible. All I knew was my experience from game consoles. So in my mind, I buy game, put it in computer, it work. I got fucking lucky. But I go to Walmart. I look for Myth. I can't find it. I'm disappointed. But luckily there's a whole wall of other games and... Uh, I grabbed the first thing that looked interesting. The first thing with war in its title. From the moment I loaded the game in and watched the intro cutscene with the human and the orc and the infernal. It was one of those moments where you realize you've lost your entire summer. And boy, howdy, I lost several. And I was right. I lost the entire summer with the exception of a few outings with my friends. Other than that, no exaggeration, I played this game nonstop fucking months. I replayed the campaign. I tried different difficulties. I looked up all the weird fucking cheats. I didn't have internet, so I couldn't play against people, but by God, I cranked up the difficulty on the computer and got my ass handed to me. And one final bit of context, if you haven't figured it out already. Coming from platformers to RTS, 
Compared to me playing Spyro now, with my patience, I'm able to complete them with little effort and, you know, all that stuff. And still have a good time. Still enjoy myself. With all the pretty colors and the shiny things. But when it comes to RTSs, my god. I can't believe. Like, you don't... I cannot believe I beat this game. Not only beat this game, I beat the shit out of this game. Without having any idea how to, like, group things into subgroups or use hotkeys or any of that. It was literally just drag the box, click, attack. The only hotkey I knew was A for attack. That was it. No, this is not a review. It's just a guy with fond memories. So this game actually has a very important and interesting tutorial level that I'm going to skip talking about for right now because it has more to do with the orcs than the humans. And this video is going to be two parts. Humans and Undead and Orc and Night Elf. We get a pretty neat cutscene. Actually, a really cool cutscene at the time. About these fancy pants aristocrats talking to King Terranus about how to deal with this plague that has gripped the Northlands. When all of a sudden, Bird Jesus arrives and tells the king he's got to get the fuck out of Dodge before the end times. And naturally, they completely ignore him. Like they should. Because I'm sure everything's going to be just fine. Our story begins with this prince named Arthas Minithal, who is the son of King Terranus, who we just saw turn down Bird Jesus. And he's been training with this badass named Uther the Lightbringer to become a paladin of the Silver Hand. So Fabio arrives to help Uther the Lightbringer defend a nearby village from the evil orc clan, the Blackrock clan. I could have said that better. But Uther leaves and Arthas arrives just as the village is getting attacked and they're carting off some villagers to sacrifice or some shit. I'm sure it'll be fine. You meet back up with Uther at his base camp, and it's finally time for some base building. And there's a neat little bonus mission you can do here, where you can help some dwarves kill an evil black drake named Cyranox. Why would you help them do that? It's said the drake's blood can bestow fiery enchantments upon weapons. Because that's why. And you get rifled. You arrive to kill this totally badass looking model, called an orc blade master, just as he kills the villagers to appease his demon masters. But I guess Uther's going to deal with this now, and we're going to go deal with some cult stuff. I'm sure it's nothing. Next, you get this neat little in-game cutscene of the Prophet trying to convince Antonidas, the leader of the Kirin Tor, a society of wizards that have their own city. A wizard city?! He ain't having none of it either. Bird Jesus flies away, and then he calls out his pupil, Jaina Proudmore, who's invisibly stalking him. But he ain't got time to discipline her, so he sends her off to do something with the cults too, and to meet someone. It's Arthas, and yes, they've plowed. You get some new units along the way, you get some priests, you get some dwarves, and you see a lot of fucking undead. You arrive just in time to see a shiny necromancer flee for his life. So in a fit of rage, you burn down the closest thing you can find, which happens to be a barn, which happens to be your objective. To destroy the barn. You know, Tim, I've dabbled in a bit of necromancy myself. The next mission is back to base building, resource management, and killing things that are already dead. You meet Kel'Thuzad, the shiny necromancer that's the leader of the Cult of the Dam, who's been spreading around the plagued grain who also reveals that Mal Ganis is actually the one behind the Scourge, which is the name of the undead army, and uh, you kill him, and then go hunt Mal Ganis. Kalthazad's dead for good. He's never coming back. Ever. <laughs> now, on to the first mission that really tested me back in the day. It's a type of mission that's pretty common in RTSs, at least the ones that I've played. Hold out until blank arrives, or hold out until you can get the fuck out of there, or hold out until thingy charges. 
or hold out because end of days and that's exactly what you do you have to wait for Uther to arrive as backup and let me tell you if you never played an RTS game before and this is your first time hitting a mission like this uh, you're probably gonna die a lot and you either love the fact that it's challenging or you quit and you go back to whatever the fuck it was you were playing before this considering how impatient I was with platforming games Again, I'm amazed I beat this game. But you stick with it, Uther arrives, and saves the day. And then Arthas gets mad and storms off like a little bitch. I'm really starting to hate this guy. Crow Jesus shows up and tries to convince Arthas, and that goes about as well as you'd expect. Jaina comes out of hiding again from eavesdropping, and uh, Arthas gets pissed and decides to take out his rage on the nearby city of Stratholm. And if you've played this game before, or are familiar with Warcraft lore, you know what's coming. This is probably one of the most infamous missions in this game, as well as one of the most infamous moments in the Warcraft 3 storyline. It marks a very pivotal turning point for Arthas, and is the beginning of the end. Arthas did nothing wrong! <sighs> Arthas and Uther arrive just in time to find out that all of the villagers have eaten the poison gluten. So, Arthas comes to the only logical conclusion. Kill everyone and burn the city to the ground. Uther gets pissed. Rightfully so. Arthas also gets pissed, abuses his princely power, strips Uther of his holiness. Uther fucks off along with all of his knights. Jaina can't stand to watch him do this. And Arthas is left alone to commit genocide. Then Malgana shows up and taunts him. Fun fact! You can kill the villagers before they become zombies. And it still counts towards the kill meter! Ha <laughs> ha! Malganus proceeds to challenge him to a purge off. And yes, if you kill them before they turn, it counts. After you're done killing your own people, burning your own city to the fucking ground, Malganus taunts you again, and uh, Arthas completely fucking falls for the bait and follows him to the North Pole, where he'll eventually meet the king of the Zambies. The Witch King. Uther arrives to uh, witness the horror that Arthas is unleashed upon his own people and meets up with Jaina who proceeds to tell him that he's gone to the North Pole to hunt the devil. Then, the prophet shows up and finally somebody drinks the fucking Kool-Aid. So you arrive in Antarctica, you kill some wolves and murder some trolls and some spider centaurs. That's one quick little note about these games. They got some really neat races in Warcraft. Fucking Nerubians? Like ancient spider people that look like spider centaurs? Like I fucking hate spiders, but that's pretty neat. Then you meet some dwarves. They help you hunt for the devil. You don't find him, but you level his base. So after that, Arthas is like, man, the fuck you doing up here, Muradin? And Muradin's like, we're looking for a magic sword. And Arthas is like, cool. but I'm sure everything will be fine. Fast forward a few days to Arthas' base camp. An emissary arrives upon Uther's request, telling a nameless captain that Arthas and all of his men have to come home because it's getting late. Naturally, Arthas gets mad and doesn't listen. So what does he do? Well, <laughs> the only logical thing you could do in this situation Burn your own ships so you can't leave. But not before hiring a bunch of mercenaries to help you kill your way to the coast. And then blame the burning ships on the mercenaries that you just hired. I'm starting to think everything's not going to be alright. 
You love this next part, don't you? Of course I do. That blonde bitch has finally abandoned the path of righteousness and weakness for a taste of true power. So in the beginning of the next mission, uh, Muradin tells Arthas he's an ass. Uh, Arthas completely ignores him. The devil finally shows up and says, Hey, I can't believe you fell for that. I'm gonna kill you now. And then Arthas is like, Wait, our only hope out of this is that magic sword. <laughs> Will you help me get it? And Muradin's like, All right, sure. And finally, Arthas takes the final step required to permanently damn his soul. Yes. So they travel to the vault with some men while your base is left to get attacked by Malganus. This is actually a pretty cool mission. I enjoyed it. It was fun, but challenging in a fair way. And it was quite the task for Itty Bitty Tim back in the day. So you fight your way through the vault. You kill all kinds of shit. You get to the guardian of the vault, and even he tells you this is a bad fucking idea. Yes. You know what, V? Just finish it. Just finish this up. It's fine. Excellent. Perfect. Arthas finally casts the last remnants of his humanity to the wind. Fuck you, dwarf. Fuck you, father. Fuck my people. Fuck Jaina. And fuck my soul. Give me that sword. You return from the vault, level that green pretender's base, and give him a taste of true power. Don't fuck with destiny, you makeshift Beelzebub. But Arthas isn't done there. Oh no! He returns to give his father exactly what he deserves. Cold steel to the gut for his weakness. Cutting off the head of the kingdom so the body dies. Brilliant! <laughs> At the end of the human campaign, which I thought was the end of the entire game, I decided to sit down and read this fancy pantsy instruction manual that came with the game. Now I'd give you a visual representation, but I read mine so much that it literally fell apart and turned to dust and I had to get rid of it. And all the other versions of the game that I bought after because I lost the disc several times and had to rebuy this game, they didn't come with the same one. It came with a similar one, but it wasn't the cool... Hopefully someone knows what I'm talking about. It's this little book it's about. Yay, big. If I can find a picture of it, it looks like that. But it was awesome. It turns out, I had a lot more to this game. And I missed out on a lot of really cool lore stuff. I realized pretty quickly that Undead played very differently from Human. You get spooky ghosts that spy for you. Ghouls. That are pretty weak, but they can heal themselves by being zombies. And Arthas is your hero unit. He's a Death Knight now. The Death Knight actually plays very similar to the Paladin. Very, very similar. Wow, Tim. It's almost like the game devs knew what the fuck they were doing. I know, right? The Death Coil even heals undead and damages living the way that the Paladin's Holy Light would heal living and hurt undead. It's pretty fucking neato. So right away you meet this big red devil that looks like a fancier version of Malganus. Arthas gets, Well, I thought I killed you even though I've seen undead this entire fucking time. Anyway, he's your boss now and he tells you you gotta go rally the cult of the damned. That cult that while you were a living paladin you spent all that time fucking with. But Arthas is dead inside now, literally. So naturally, he's all for it. This is kind of a stealth mission, which was pretty hard when I was younger because I didn't realize there were a bunch of neat little paths in between the trees. And I didn't even know that ghouls could just attack trees because they're also the lumber gathering unit. But that all goes out the window once you get to the graveyard because then it just turns into an RTS game and you got zombies and you're just killing the townsfolk like they're lambs to the slaughter and all that good stuff. The next mission is the This Is How the Undead Work mission. It's your first base building mission is them. And it teaches you the basics. And there's a secret society of Wookiees in the woods. No, I'm not kidding. There's not really much to this mission. Except to kill Uther. Yeah. 
that either. That's what you get, you righteous prick. <coughs> I liked Uther. I thought he was cool. Of course you do. Remember that necromancer, Kel'Thuzad? He's haunting you now. The whole point of this mission was to kill Uther and get this magic urn that had your dad's ashes in it so that you could put Kel'Thuzad's ashes in it so that they wouldn't decompose more because you're going to the realm of the High Elves so that you can throw him in their magic fountain and bring him back to life. Whee! There's a little in-between cutscene here where a bunch of the devils meet up in a place that looks like hell, naturally. And this is the first time you hear the name of the big bad. Lord Archimond. Back in the real world, Arthur has made it to the home of the High Elves, Quel'Thalas. He reminisces for a moment before he realizes he has to get back to his mission, his purpose for being here. To genocide the elves and throw a dead body in their magic fountain. It's in this mission that you finally get to use the Necromancer. This is also the mission where you meet the now infamous Sylvanas Windrunner. Now I'm making this video through the magical lens of nostalgia, so I don't have to talk about any other Sylvanas Windrunner besides this Sylvanas Windrunner. The next mission is garbage. I fucking hate it. Seriously, I don't even want to talk about it. I don't have anything good to say about the next mission. You finally get spider centaurs. That's it. After smashing your way through the inner and the outer gate, it's time to finally piss in that magic fountain. Right away, Sylvanas starts attacking you, and as soon as you beat her the first time, she starts sending runners to Silvermoon. And let me tell you, these guys are fucking fast. How fast? If they're not careful, one of these sons of bitches is going to cause a flashback. But with some patience, you finally kill Sylvanas Windrunner and level her base. And then Arthas brings her back to life, which I'm sure isn't going to bite anyone in the ass. After some more fighting, you siege their city, you kill the guardians of the Sunwell, and then you toss Kel'Thuzad in, it changes colors, and he comes out as a lich. And now you get a lich. After that, you get another little in-game graphic cutesy cutscene where you and your new bestest friend head off into the mountains where he tells you the truth. A vast demonic army led by Archimond called the Burning Legion created the Lich King and made the orcs green. I didn't know that at the time. Don't get me wrong, I, I like the idea of the Burning Legion and uh, I can still enjoy it, but uh, it's a bit much. So the Legion uses other races and other forces to pre-invade a planet. I get that. To kill all the resistance. I get that. So the the, the bulk of the army, the, the big scary demons and the big, big bad himself can show up and kill all the women and children? Anyway. You fight the Blackrock clan again, and you get the Frostworm. A side thing you can do in this mission is kill all the individual orc chieftains and they drop magic books to make your heroes better. Which is pretty cool. And I did it at the time, but it, I think the first time I played this mission it took me like three or four hours or some stupid shit. I tend to... With these games I used to get ridiculous and in my magical fantasy brain would pretend I was building cities and actually living in the moment. And that was pretty but the main reason I did it was because uh, I was sick and tired of getting attacked by those fuckers. And I'm like, you know what? I've already killed all the elves and fucked over the dwarf and all this other shit. What's another genocide? The whole point of this mission was to destroy the red base of orcs. Because they have a functioning demon gate. And Kel'Thuzad uses it to talk to Archimon, who looks pretty cool, by the way. Who tells him... You need to go to the wizard city of Dalaran because they have a magic book of Medivh. The last guardian. Well, I had no idea was the bird prophet at the time because I guess I missed that part. There are two other fucking games and a little booklet. And what do I know? I can't read. But apparently these wizards heard what you did to the elves and they're fucking ready for you. This mission was pretty annoying back in the day, but in a satisfying way. You had to think a little bit in this mission about how to approach the situation, because uh, 
there were different ways that you could pass through the ores. They had little crates all over the fucking map where you would smash them and then you would get mercenary units that were living and not undead so they weren't hurt by the ores. So you could use them strategically to do things or you could just swamp them with flying units or you could just plow your way through with abominations and necromancers and all kinds of neat stuff. I like this mission. Then you kill Antonidas and take his magic book. And then... It begins. You see, the younger wizard slash gamer me hated this mission because I just wanted to get back to building bases, building armies, and go kill this guy, go kill that guy, go smash this thing, and be done with it. But the older me, the now me, really likes this mission. It's a holdout mission, but it's not a normal holdout mission. It's a doozy. These fuckers come at you like you're trying to summon some kind of demon lord that's going to spark this massive demonic invasion and literally kill everyone. It's crazy. My strategy back then was build spirit towers fucking everywhere and abominations and pray. My strategy now? Have a single unit with Arthas, a wall of spirit towers, and use Arthas to pick off the ones that are fucking with the spirit towers. Primarily those dwarves with tanks. Now, Kalthazad gets demons. What you want to do is you want to keep them in the center until you get a full control group, and then use them as an alternate attack source, and also a full control unit of gargoyles to go anywhere because very versatile and fly and when you get down to like the last I believe it's like a minute and a half or a minute of this fucking mission Jesus Christ but eventually you succeed and you get to see Archimond in a cool cinematic cutscene where he levels Dalaran with some magic sand overall the human campaign is a good primer for the basic functions of the game, and the Undead campaign is a good complement to expand upon those functions. Unless you were me and you didn't pay attention. It's almost like the game devs knew what they were doing. Now, let's get to that boy on the cover of the box art.